God be the glory join me as we recognize the presence of the Lord with our praises let every mouth be filled with praises shout your praises unto him thank God recognize God adore God praise the name of the Lord to God be the glory you are most worthy of our praises you are most worthy of our adoration we lift you up O Lord we shout your praises we stand upon your promises we declare your victory over the things and circumstances in our lives hallelujah Oh God, you have been opening your words unto us these past two nights. We feel like we're the disciple of your son Jesus, Cleopas. When Cleopas was on the road to Emmaus, your son Jesus, the rest, the reason. Christ stood next to him walked with him and he opened up the scriptures to Cleopas Cleopas said were not our hearts burning this is what you have been doing to us O Lord you have been setting our hearts aflame you are rekindling rekindling the first love we have for you thank you for your Holy Spirit who is the spirit of truth from him we are reminded of the things that have been written and the things that are yet to be revealed tonight in this concluding service of our doctrinal empowerment we believe that it is not only our minds that you have equipped with knowledge but you have also stirred up our hearts you have awakened our deepest affection for you you have stirred up our purest devotion to you Kaya naman gawin mo kami sa gabing ito na mapagtagumpay. Gawin mo kami na hindi lamang tagapakinig kundi tagagawa. At ihanda mo kami sa muling pagparito ng iyong buktong na anak na si Jesus na siyang aming Panginoon at Hari na darating. Ito pong aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. To God be the glory. Good evening everyone. Turn to those around you and give the blessings of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We are delighted to be in the fellowship of everyone and most of all in communion with the Spirit of the Lord. We would like to also recognize our brethren from different local churches of the PMCC Port Watch in the Philippines and abroad who have been uh, joining us via live stream in this doctrinal empowerment. And on a personal note, I'd like to thank also those of you who have been posting words of affirmation and encouragement letting me know that you are appreciating these uh, doctrinal empowerment and messages so uh, thank you so much i really appreciate them some of you have even sent me personal messages just letting me know that you're getting the message and uh, i praise the lord that uh, we have this opportunity to really be empowered once again, put our hands together for the shepherd here at the PMCC Fort Watch of Marikina. 
Bishop Sam Periol, together with the entire pastoral staff, elders of the church, and the pastoral staff, they are doing the best they could to shepherd us, to guide us in our service unto the Lord. Never forget that. Actually, in the United States, ang buwan ng Oktubre ay ang tradisyonal na tinatawag nila na Clergy Appreciation Month. Clergy or Pastors Appreciation Month. And last uh, earlier this year, we uh, took the uh, concept, the idea of this Clergy Appreciation Month because it is really scriptural if you really look at it. And we made it officially as January. So next, uh, in, in next year, January, is going to be our Clergy Appreciation uh, Month. And I believe January 28th next year is going to be the exact Sunday. We're going to celebrate, appreciate, and affirm the work of our pastors uh, in their spiritual oversight over us. You know, tonight, um, my message is something that we are going to do on a more positive note. Uh, we're going to have some uh, wonderful, joyful evening tonight. For the last two nights, I have been uh, ministering to you some grim and some uh, quite uh, scary scenario uh, that's going to happen in our time, in our generation. But tonight, um, I would like to look at, I would like you to join me looking at the end times in a more pleasant, in a more positive, in a more uh, delightful way. And uh, ako ay uh, nasurpresa na kung ating talagang lilimiin, bubulayin ang salita ng Diyos, ang kawakasan ng huling araw ay mga araw na hindi dapat natin ikatakot, kundi araw ito na ating dapat ikasiya. And uh, my goal tonight is to convince you and to persuade you that we have more reasons to be looking forward to these end of the last days rather than being, uh, you know, miserable and, and scared about it. So, tonight this message is entitled, Signs of the End Times We Should Look For. The end of the last days, like what I have already mentioned, should not scare us. The end of the last days should not uh, frighten us. Hindi dapat tayo matakot. Hindi dapat tayo masindak sa kawakasan ng mga huling araw. Sa katunayan, mga kapatid, ang kawakasan ng mga huling araw ay mga araw na maaari nating ikasiya. Maaari nating ikatuwa. Yes, there is that uh, angle of the end of the last days that is downright frightening. No doubt about that. But on the other hand, there is this angle of the end of the last days that is outrightly, positively encouraging and uh, delightful and it should cause us to be rejoicing. At yun ang gusto kong uh, magawa sa gabing ito. Na ipakita sa inyo ang mga magagandang dahilan bakit sa kawakasan ng huling araw ay hindi dapat tayo matakot, kundi dapat tayo ay masiyahan, matuwa, at magkaroon ng pag-asa. Just look at these verses. I'm just gonna uh, give to you three important principal verses that suggests otherwise that there is more reason for us to be hopeful there is uh, there are more reasons to be hopeful and to be happy and to be delighted and to be positive for instance here in the book of romans in chapter 8 
in Romans, in chapter 8, for instance, in verse 23, here the Apostle Paul says, And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope, we were saved. I want you to pay close attention to the words, we wait eagerly. In Tagalog, basahin natin yan sa wikang Tagalog. Ang sabi, at hindi lamang gayon, kundi pati naman tayo na mayroong mga pangunahing buwan ng Espiritu sa so mga tuwid bagay tayo na may nagsisihibig din sa ating sarili sa paghihintay ng pagkupkop na dilit iba ang pagtubo sa ating katawan. Mukhang uh, sa wikang uh, Tagalog ay uh, parang iba ang pakahulugan dahil ang ginamit na salita ay nangagsisihibig. Pero sa wikang Ingles, ang sabi, we eagerly await or we wait eagerly for our adoptions. This is the mental, emotional posture of every true believer. Eagerness. Eagerness. What is the more appropriate word in Tagalog? Eagerness. Nananabik. Pananabik. Ang bawat mananampalataya, ang bawat fourth watcher, kailangan ay nananabik. Eagerness. Eagerness. There must be eagerness on our part to see Jesus return and our adoption as sons to be fully consummated. Look at also here in the book of Philippians in chapter 3. In Philippians in chapter 3 in verse 20. Can you please flash the verse in Tagalog. I'm going to read it in English. It says here, their end is destruction, their God is their belly, their glory is their shame, with mindset on the er er earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it, we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will, in verse 21, transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body. Na siyang magbabago ng katawan ng ating pagkamababa upang maging katulad ng katawan ng kanyang kalwalhatian ayon sa paggawa na maipagpapasuko niya sa lahat ng magbagay sa kanya. Hmm? Ang sabi dito sa wika ingles, as we await, and this is a theme throughout the New Testament scriptures, that those who wait for the coming of Jesus, they are waiting with eagerness. Like Simeon and Anna, the prophetess, the Bible says they eagerly await for the consolation of Israel. We do not dread. We do not dread. We do not cower in fear thinking about Jesus returning. Hindi na tayo natatakot sa muling pagparito ni Jesus. Hindi tayo natatakot sa rapture. Hindi lahat tayo ay umaasam na ma-rapture. Kaya napakaganda yung praise na sa atin ay itinuro ng mahal na apostol. Happy rapture. Because rapture is not something that we must dread and we must be scared about or be frightened about. We should look forward to it. We should wait for it with eagerness, with joy, and positive anticipation. Here's another verse in Hebrews 9.28. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time. Can I hear an amen? amen? 
This is uh, one of the most powerful assertions of Christ's return. He will appear a second time. The author of the book of Hebrews cannot get any clearer than that. Liliwanag pa ba yan sa araw? Napakaliwanag. He will appear a second time. Not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for Him. Eagerly. Sa wikang uh, Tagalog, ano ang sinabi? Sa ikaliligtas ng mga nagsisipaghintay sa Kanya. Those who are eagerly waiting. It's one thing to wait, and it's another thing to wait with eagerness. Kaya tayo mga mananampalataya, tayo ay masayang naghihintay. In fact, I would uh, submit to you that a true fourth watcher is a happy believer. Hindi dapat tayo nababagot. Hindi dapat tayo naiirita. Yes, there are valid questions and there are things that we encounter in our lives that make us somehow uh, think our position without sometimes, but ultimately, we must surrender. Yes? Ipapasakot natin ang ating damdamin, ang ating isip sa salita ng Diyos, na ang muling pagparito ng Panginoon ay dapat nating kapanabikan. Asamin. Hmm? I remember the apostle saying this one time, and I will never forget this. Quote, When we hear the end of the world, we should not be afraid because we do not belong to the world. Oh, you did not get that. Let me, let me read, read that. When we hear the end of the world, we should not be afraid. Ang sabi ni Apostol, pag marinig nyo ang wakas ng sanglibutan, hindi dapat kayo matakot. Sapagat hindi tayo kabilang sa sanglibutan. Kabilang tayo sa iglesia ng Diyos, sa bayan ng Diyos. But is this a realistic take of the future? Bishop, can we be uh, honest here? Oh, I am honest with you. What about the scenarios? What about this, uh, you know, cataclysms and all these uh, apocalyptic events that Jesus Christ uh, said in the, his Mount Olivet uh, sermon or discourse, for instance, in Matthew 24, na kung saan ay makikita natin na magkakaroon ng malaking kaguluhan ang mundo titiwarik Ang mga bundok ay magigiba, ang mga tubig tataas, magkakaroon ng malaking uh, kaingayan sa mga dagat, ang sabi ng Biblia, at ang mga tao ay hihimatayin, sisindakin, magkakaroon ng mga gera at mga tunog ng gera, magkakaroon ng taggutom, pag, uh, mga lindol, mga pagsabog ng bulkan, Darating ang mga bulaang mga ngaral, dadayain ang maraming mga tao, mga bulaang mesyas, bishop. Hindi ba yon ay mga bagay na dapat nating ikatakot, ikasindak? Kapag ang isang tao ay wala sa iglesia ng Panginoon at hindi anak ng Diyos, totoo, ito'y nakakasindak. Subalit sa atin, mga kapatid, na mayroong buhay na pag-asa, na may mapalad na pag-asa. Yan ang ating pag-asang hinihintay. We're not thinking about the mere end of times or the end of the world. In fact, the end of the world for this earth is the beginning of the new world for us in heaven. Because we are looking towards a new heaven and a new earth. The home of the righteous, where righteousness dwells. Kaya hindi tinatawag na mapalat na pag-asa at tayo ay mapupuno, babalutin ng takot, ng sindak, 
at panginginig. Paul says to Titus, his son in the faith, in Titus 2.13, that this is what we are waiting. We are waiting. Waiting. Hindi tayo nagbabaka sakali dito. We are not second guessing. We're not throwing the dice. We're not crossing our fingers. Sana, sana. In the United States, that is their uh, gesture. Pag gusto nila na may mangyari, cross your fingers. Knock on wood. No, we're not knocking on wood here. We're not crossing our fingers. And we're not saying, sana all. Oh no. We're sure. We're waiting. Tell it to the one next to you, left and right, front and back. I'm waiting for the rapture. Praise the Lord. We are waiting for the blessed hope. That is what's coming. <laughs> that is what's coming for us. The blessed hope. Ang mapalad na pag-asa. Sino hindi naghihintay sa pag-asa? Kaya hindi natin kinakatakutan, kinasisindakan ang kawakasan ng mga huling araw. Tayo mga kapatid ay may kasiyahan. Happy rapture! I like the words of our Savior. Turn your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 21 in 28. It says, When these things begin to occur, stand tall. Lift up your heads in joy. I'd like to read that in the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, when these things begin to occur, stand tall. Lift up your heads in joy. Because suffering ends as your redemption is drawing near. Praise the name of the Lord. Stand tall. <clears throat> Stand tall. Do not stoop low. Do not cower in a corner. Stand tall. Look forward. Di ba yung naghihintay sa airport na dumating ang kanilang pinakamamahal sa buhay na galing sa Saudi Arabia? At yung mga galing sa Saudi Arabia Nung sila'y umaalis, ang kasama, dalawa lang. Nung pauwi na, dalawang jeep na. Mapapansin ninyo, mas maraming sumasalubong kaysa naghahatid. Lalo na yung galing sa Amerika. Pati yung mga gwardiya at mga pulis, hinihintay ang pagdating ng galing sa Amerika. Literal, dalawang jeep. Meron pa ako nakikita dalawang minibus. At kung sila'y maghintay, nakabukas na yung kanilang cellphone sa my, my day at my story. 30 minutes, hindi pa lumilitaw. Nagsawa na. Maya-maya. Sinabi na kung anong oras ang dating ng aeroplano, 9.45 p.m., 9.46, tanong na naman. Dumating na ba? Kasasabi ko lang, 9.40. <laughs> Bakit? Nananabik. Tayo, mga kapatid, nananabik tayo sa muling pagparito ng Panginoon. Now, what are these happy signs? I call it, I, I, I call them happy signs. What are these happy signs that we must look forward to? Napapasin niyo ba? Iba ang, iba ang temperatura sa gabing ito. Masaya? Matagal na ako nagtuturo ng eschatology, mapapakapit ka sa upuan dahil nakakatakot. Nakakatakot. Lalo kapag ang pag-usapan ay si Antikristo. Hmm? Pero ngayon, mag, sa gabi ito, mga kapatid, uuwi tayong malakas at masaya. So what are these happy signs that we must look uh, forward to see and to be a part of? Number one, endurance to the end. Endurance to the end. 
Matthew 24, 13. We see that also in Luke 21, 19. It says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Revelation chapter, uh, Revelation 14, verse 12, if I'm not mistaken, here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. Alam natin, mga kapatid, ang isa sa mga pinaka-inspiring na larawan, isa sa mga pinaka-inspiring na masdan ay yaong mahina na nagpapatuloy sa kalakasan. Yan yung buksingero na kahit duguan ay lumalaban pa rin. Yan yung mananakbo na hindi na maka uh, maka maka makagulapay eh tumatakbo pa rin. Yan yung ang lahat ay sumuko na siya ay lumalaban pa rin. That is going to be the picture of the church. We are going to be a picture of what one historian says, the picture of sacred endurance, ang banal na mga pagtitiis. And it is a glorious, wonderful sight. It has been said that Jesus Christ in heaven is always described as someone who is sitting at the right hand of the Father. But, nung si Esteban, mga kapatid, ay nakaluhod at mamatay-matay na, malapit na siyang mamatay, naghihingalo na siya, pero siya buhay pa ang kanyang diwa. Ang kanyang katawan ay hindi na makayanan ang mga bato na pinagbabato sa kanya. Duguan siya, halos naglulupasay na siya, nakita niya ang Panginoong Jesus. Hindi nakaupo, nakatayo. You know, in, in social protocols, you stand when someone higher than you enters yung mas mataas sa'yo. Pag yun ay pumasok sa silid, ikaw ay tatayo. Mga estudyante, pag dumating ang guro, di ba? Tumatayo. Ang mga dignitaries, ang mga politicians, pag pumasok ang presidente, binibigyan siya ng standing ovation. Si Esteban, nung siya papasok sa langit, ang unang subalubong sa kanya ay ang Panginoong Jesus. Tumayo. If I were to read between the lines, Parang sabi ng Panginoon, nung siya'y nakaupo sa trono, parang tumayo. Pinalakpakan si Esteban. Brethren, pag nakakakita tayo ng kapatid, na sa kabila ng mga pagtitiis, sa kabila ng mga bagay na may hirap, kalunos-lunos na nangyayari sa kanya, sa kabila ng kahirapan, sa kabila ng mga pagsubok, ay naroroon, hindi sumusuko. Dalo pa rin ang dalo ng gawain. Wala nang pangpamasahe, dalo pa rin ang gawain. Wala pa siyang pang thanksgiving, and dun pa rin. Nagkakalob siya ng sagana. Pinipigilan, inaalimura, inuusig ng kanyang mga di kapananampalataya ng mga kasambahay, pero hindi siya nagpapapigil. Matanda na siya, nagpasimula siyang bata na naglilingkod dito sa PMCC, Fort Watch of Marikina. Ngayon, ikalimampung taon niya ng paglilingkod, hindi siya tumitigil. Yan ang larawan ng banal na mga pagtitiis. Hindi dapat natin sila kaawaan. We should not pity them. Like, kawawa naman. No, 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 no. Don't pity them. You know what? I would even recommend that you salute them. You salute them. You admire them. Kaya purihin ng Panginoon sa taon na ito, 
binigyan natin ang mga tinatawag nating mga seasoned believers here in Marikina ng highest apostolic award. Palakpakan natin ang mga kapatid sa Marikina. For the last 50 years, ay naglilingkod sa Panginoon. And if you are one of those who have been serving the Lord for the last 50 years, kung kayo isa sa mga naglilingkod sa Panginoon sa tunay na iglesia dito sa lokal na Marikina, at kayo narito dito sa gabing ito, pakitayo. Meron ba? Pakitayo. Praise the Lord. Tumanggap kayo. Meron pa ba sa atin? Okay, meron akong ilang mga nakikita. Doon, those of you who are joining us via our live stream, you can also stand. By the grace of God, that is what you call enduring to the end. The end of the last days will be extraordinarily trying and challenging. But we must go through them with joy. We must go through our sufferings with joy. Lahat tayo may pinagdadaanan. Lahat tayo ay merong mga kabigatan. Pero huwag kayong magbumukhang mayroong mahabang muka. Okay, mukhang mali yung asalita ko ata. Yung iba sa inyo, nagnonotes, biglang napaganon eh. Itinigil yung pagnonotes eh. Okay, uh, mukhang kabayo ba yun? Ano ba? Hindi, <laughs> may salita dyan eh. Pagpasensyahan nyo na, I'm brushing up may Tagalog. Ah, uh, Anyway, sa English kasi, do not wear a long face religion. Yan, yung parang uh, pinagtakluban ka ng langit at ng lupa. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 verse 2, Count it all joy. Count it as joy. My brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, Meet your trials with a smile. Meet your challenges with a positive demeanor. The first church in the book of Acts, in chapter 5, verse 41, kahit sila pinaghahampas, pinaglalatigo, sa halip na sila ay umaray, sumuko, bumitiw sa pananampalataya. Ganito ang sabi. They left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. That's what you call heavenly tenacity. Hindi ka, hindi ka basta-basta at hindi ka susuko. You go through your sufferings with a smile. Because you always see that behind your sufferings is your glory. Behind your cross is your crown. Behind your death is your life. That is why in the end of the last days, brethren, we will go through these sufferings. Maybe you are a pastor who is suffering. Maybe you are a Bible student who is suffering. Right now, we have a Bible student from the United States uh, of America that I sent to Kenya. This kid was born and raised in the United States, surrounded by the comforts of his home. Hindi niya akalain na siya ay dadalhin sa Kenya. Ngayon, siya ay napapaligiran ng mga giraffe, ng mga zebra, ng mga hipopotamus. Pero mga kapatid, masaya siyang nangunguna sa gawain ng Panginoon. Number two, this is another happy sign that we should look at and be a part of. The global spread of the true gospel in Matthew 24 verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be proclaimed or preached throughout the whole world 
as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Wow. That is exciting, right? If ever there is something that makes our heart skip a bit and leap and makes us uh, excitedly nervous, it is when we see sinners repenting. Nakaka-relate tayo sa langit. Sino sa inyo nakaka-relate sa langit? Ano nangyayari sa langit pag mayroon isang makasalanang nagsisisi? Sabi, nagkakatuwa. Paano kung hindi lamang isa ang magsisi, kundi isang libo? Dalawang libo? Tatlong libo? Apat na libo? Kaya hindi lamang kasiyahan. Party. Ang nangyayari. And this is what we're gonna see. Despite the societal upheavals and the dire circumstances of the end times, the global preaching of the gospel is that one sliver of good news that we could all be happy about. Daming nakakatakot ng mga bagay na nangyayari. Digmaan, kaguluhan, lindol, taggutom, kawalan ng wifi. <gasps> I could hear some of you, especially the young people, you gasp. Yung sinasabi kong lindol, nakaganyan lang kayo. Lindol, taggutom, digmaan, wifi. <gasps> Sabi ng mga young people, Oh no! But thanks be to God, may isang balita na nakakatuwa. Ang pandaigdigang paglawak ng pangangaral ng Ebanghelyo ng ating Panginoon. At sa panahon na iyon, mga kapatid, ito ang kanilang ikinagalak. The spread of the gospel which led to the mushrooming of churches all over the known world. Mga kapatid, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Satan tried to stop us. Darkness tried to overtake us. But thanks be to God, the apostle in his leadership, Naa, nope. The PMCC Fort Watch will not be stopped. Praise the name of the Lord. So when the apostle saw the home free global crusade, he said to me, Anak, wag mong titigilan yan. Gawin mo lagi iyan. And this year, we are celebrating our third year. And this is for the first time we have seen these vast numbers of people being reached, being impacted, being exposed to the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Millions of people all across the world have seen the Home Free Global Crusade. And their exposure to the gospel they're being impacted by the gospel led to the mushrooming of churches around the world. Biyaya ng Panginoon, mga kapatid. Ang Kenya, bunga yan ng Home Free Global Crusade. Ang gawain sa Mexico, bunga yan ng Home Free Global Crusade. Ang gawain sa Guatemala, bunga yan ng Home Free Crusade. May mga churches sa North America, may mga churches sa Europe, may mga churches dito sa Pilipinas na literal lumalapit sa akin ng mga manggagawa at sinasabi, Bishop, ito talaga ang kanilang salita pa, 100%. Puro ito convert ng Home Free Global Crusade. Nung isang araw, nakatanggap ako ng isang uh, liham 
mula sa ating kamanggagawa si Pastor or Presbyter Rodora Ramos. At kanyang ipinapatotoo na may kapatid sa Hawaii na naimbitahan itong mag-asawa na sa katunayan ay mga manggagawa ng isang uh, kalipunan at ang kanilang lahi ay mga taga Marshallese mga an uh, uh, mga ano yung tagalog ng native mga native hindi naman native kat nalala ko si bishop sa me native Katutubo, katutubo ang salita. Yung ba kasi narinig ko, net. Ano sa, ano sa Tagalog ng native? Native. <laughs> Hindi, katutubo. Mga katutubo. <laughs> Sabi ko sa inyo, masaya tayong yung gabing ito eh. Mga, mga katutubo sa Marshall Islands. At uh, hindi ko mababasa sa inyo ang mga salita. Pero humanga siya sa Home Free Global Crusade na ginawa sa Hawaii. At siya ay nagpabautismo, yung mag-asawa. Can we show the picture? Yan. Nagpabautismo. At ngayon, nagpapa-Bible study sapagkat gusto nila na yung buong kongregasyon nila ay mabautismohan sa Fort Watch. Ang sabi ni Pablo sa 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22, So that by all possible means I might save some so that by all possible means and this is what we need to really internalize do not belittle any means do not belittle any opportunity because big opportunities they come from small Random opportunities. Are you still with me? Big doors. Big doors. Before they are flung open, they first of all open a jar. Hindi agad bumubukas yan. Unti-unting bumubukas yan. Praise be to God, brethren. God is opening to us a new evangelistic paradigm. I was born and raised and became ad adult as a fourth watcher. I've been to all the crusades. I have joined as many crusades as I uh, can. I have sung in the crusades. Yes. Bago ako sa industriya ng pangangaral, ako yung nasa industriya ng pag-awit. Ako yung umaawit. Nung nakita nila na tuwing ako'y umaawit, ay umuunti ang mga tao sa krusada. At pag ako'y nangangaral, ay dumadami ang mga tao. Sabi nila, huwag ka nang umawit, mangaral ka na lang. Kaya ako po'y nangangaral na lang. <laughs> Pero ngayon, mga ngayon ko lang nakita ito. Na literally, libo-libo ang naliligtas. Overnight churches are being opened. This is God's move. This is Matthew 24:14 happening right before our very eyes. Natutupad. Yes, there are many things that could discourage us. There are so many things that could frighten us, traumatize us. But remember this. There are more reasons to be joyful, to be hopeful, especially when you take part in the Home Free Global Crusade. This year, oh, praise God, this year, we are going to unleash mm, this evangelistic juggernaut. Kumbaga, gumagawa tayo ng isang malaking makinarya. Alam nyo, mga kapatid, Sa January 14, okay? Alam nyo naman, ang birthday ni Apostle, January 14. At birthday din niya ng, ewan ko, isa sa mga anak niya. <clears throat> yeah. Anong mga anak niya? Yung isa doon, parang, ewan ko, 
Kaberday ni Apostol yun. January 14, maglulunsad tayo ng masasabi nating pinakamalaking krusada saan pa? Sa Quirino Grandstand. Dadali natin ang isa sa mga pinakasikat na mga mga aawit noong dekada 90, Dicatinas. Our goal is to reach 50,000 people. 3,000 baptism that very night sa luneta pa lang. Kaya meron tayong dalawang buwan na manghihikayat ng ating mga kapitbahay, ng ating mga kaeskwela, ng ating mga kaibigan, lahat ng nasa circle ng inyong mga kaibigan, aanyayahan nyo. Pati mga ex nyo. Pati yung kinauutangan ninyo. Babayaran nyo na yon para sila yung maligtas. Sabi nyo, kung ayoko lang maligtas, di na kita babayaran. Pero ito, babayaran na kita. Pero, bago ko ibigay, ang... <laughs> dumalok ko sa krusada. Walang pupunta sa krusada na walang dalang bisita. Bawa, like. Pag kayo pumunta sa krusada, may bisita pa buo kayo. Wala po, pero gusto kong suma. Um umuwi na lang po kayo. No. I would like to stress the importance of us. It's going to be like a, a small Jerusalem. The Quirino Grandstand. Praise the name of the Lord. And this time around next year, we are going to as many countries as we can. We're going to go to Abu Dhabi, UAE. We're going to go to Los Angeles, California. We're going to go to Japan. Praise God. For the first time, I will be preaching in English and a Japanese translator will translate the message. But I'm thinking, I, 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 I'm thinking, how will the Japanese pronounce love? If I say, Jesus will loves you. Ako, paano kaya niya Jesus rubs you. So, I'm making a, I'm making a message na uunti ang ko letter L. Mahirap ata yun. But I'm excited to go to Japan. I'm excited to go to Europe. In Spain, Madrid. Sydney, Australia. Nako, talaga namang peace shop. Handang, 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 handa na kami dito sa Sydney, Australia. Purihin ng Panginoon, mga kapatid. Tayo ay pupunta sa maraming mga bansa. Sa pa unang pagkakataon, magkakaroon tayo ng krusada sa Metro Manila, sa Cuneta Astrodome. Dito sa Marikina, hmm, sa Cavite, Batangas, sa Dagupan, sa General Santos City. Halos bawat linggo may krusada. Mga kapatid, ito'y isa sa mga tanda na ang Panginoon ay muling babalik na. Amen? To God be the glory. And number three, the global gathering of the elects. The global gathering of the elects. Tingnan lamang natin yan sa verse 31 of Matthew chapter 24. It says there, And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elects from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. The four winds represents the four points of the compass. North, east, south, and west. The four winds. Those are representing the four corners of the world under heaven. And the Bible says that God will gather the elect from all corners of the world. The gathering, ano ibig sabihin ng gathering? There are two kinds of gathering. May dalawang uri ng gathering. Basahin nga natin ito sa wikang Tagalog, kung ano ibig sabihin, kung ano ang Tagalog ng gathering. 
or at susuguin ang kanyang mga anghel na may matinding pakakak at ang kanilang titipunin o pagtitipon ang kanyang mga hinirang. So pagtitipon, may dalawang uri ng pagtitipon. Una muna ang pagtitipon sa pamamagitan ng Ebanghelyo. According to Jesus Christ in the book of John chapter 10 verse 16, Basahin natin yan in the book of John 10.16. Meron akong ibang mga tupa na hindi sa kulungang ito. Sila'y kailangan din namang dalhin ko at kanilang diringgin ang aking tinig at sila'y magiging isang kawan at magkakaroon ng isang pastor. So this is the first type of gathering. It is the evangelistic gathering. This is what we are doing every time we witness, every time we share the gospel of our risen Lord to our classmates, to our friends, to our family. When they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior and then they get baptized, what happens to them? Idinaragdag sila sa kawan ng Diyos. At doon sila'y papasturan ng mga tunay na sugo ng Diyos. Biyaya ng Diyos sa iglesia pinapastoran tayo ng mabuting puno ng sangbahayan ng ating mahal na apostol. At yung mga tinipon sa iglesia, sila'y pasasakdalin, papapagtibayin, hanggang dumating sa panahon na sila ay titipunin at dadalhin sa langit at makasama nila ang pinakamabuti at dakilang pastol, walang iba kundi ang Panginoong Hesus. And so, in the rapture, it is also called gathering. We can call the rapture of the saints as the gathering of the saints. And so, there is the earthly gathering through evangelism, and then there is the heavenly gathering through the rapture of the church. This is in the Manatin, Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Those of you at the back, are you following? Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus and are being gathered together to Him. And so this gathering, brethren, is going to happen. To God be the glory. Now, the gathering of the saints, brethren, will happen. Not just here in our beautiful country. It's going to happen from different parts of the world. For the first time, nakakakita na tayo ng uh, silip. Yes? Nakakasilip na tayo kung ano ang mangyayari sa mga taong darating. Sino sa inyo nakakita sa ating mga kapatid na Kenyan noong ating 50th anniversary? Sila ang ating kauna-unahang delegado mula sa Africa. At purihin ng Panginoon Meron na tayo na mga gawain sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Africa gaya ng uh, Kenya. Hmm? Sa katunayan, pupunta doon si Bishop Aldrin Palanca para i-represent niya ang mahal na apostol at ang inyong lingkod at si Presbyter Irwin para pasinayaan at pasimulan ang formal na pagtatayo ng iglesia ng PMCC Fort Watch sa Kenya, meron tayong mga gawain sa Africa gaya ng uh, Madagascar at sa iba pang bahagi ng Africa. Meron na tayong iglesia, mga kapatid, sa karamihan ng mga bansa sa Western Europe. Marami na tayong mga kapatid na hindi Pilipino, kundi sila'y ibang lahi. Meron tayong kauna-unahang iglesia sa Mexico, Tijuana, 100% Mexicans. The only Filipino there is our pastor, uh, uh, Sister Marija Losada. Kung hindi ako nagkakamali, Sister Marija. Meron tayong bagong tayong church sa Guatemala. Puro mga Guatemalans at mga Filipino yan. Kaya tayo mga kapatid sa Iglesia ng Panginoon, bigyan natin ng puwang 
ang mga kapatid natin na hindi Pilipino. Let us give room to them. Let us not fear them. They say the Filipinos are afflicted with the colonial mentality. Colonial mentality is the belief that everything from the West is better than ours. Kaya sinasabi nila, U.S. educated. U.S. trained. U.S. born. Wala akong nakikita ng Philippine trained. Wala akong nakikita sa U.S. na Philippine, that this driver is Philippine trained in the traffic of Metro Manila. Wala, puro U.S. trained, U.S. born. Kasi nga, yung colonial mentality. Hmm? Kaya ang ating mga artista, nagagandahan, nagpuputian. Gusto natin ay parang mga western. Pero, meron ding mga takot sa western. There are Filipinos who are afraid of people of different color. They call that as xenophobia. Xenophobia. Fear of what is foreign. Especially yung mga maiitim. Nako, ang mga Pilipino, hari ng sama. Pag may bagong panganak, tin ako, ba't ang itim? <laughs> eh ano ngayon? Pag maputi, oh puti, puti niya. Lalo na ngayon, ha? sinabayan pa ng Korean. Lahat, Korean glow with matching, ha? tinatabasan yan. Noong ako yung nime-make-upan ng kapatid na Cha Deslate, sabi ko, sis, ano gagawin mo dito sa eyebrow ko? Sabi niya, Bishop, ano lang, fill in the blanks. And my two girls, Nicole and Miracle, all they do is laugh at my eyebrow. Okay? Mga kapatid, huwag tayong matakot sa ibang lahi. Remember, the church is meant to be a house of prayer for all nations. The apostle is our author of the global mission. And I'm proud to be part of the global mission. 25 years I spent my life in the United States. Praise be to God, the work of God in North America is growing by leaps and bounds. But here in the Philippines, let's open up ourselves. Hmm? Young people, join us. Join the apostle in the gathering of the elect around the world. They say, join the U.S. Navy and see the world. Oh, I beg to disagree. Join the missions and see the world. Hmm? And so this is what we must do, brethren. Actually, we have elders in the United States. Some of them are semi-retired. Kaysa sila'y nagaganchilyo lamang at nasa duyan at nagaganchilyo at yung mga uh, lalaki ay uh, pasalume, salume lang. Bisa, ano yung salume? Kape. Salume! Kape! Ang ginagawa nila, they join the uh, RRB in different countries. Yeah. They spend two weeks, they spend three weeks of their own money. They travel around the world as missionaries. If you can spend some money, join the global mission and join in the gathering of the saints. We are now dispersed economically. Ano? Ang Pilipino, kahit saan, masusumpuan mo, may mga Pilipino sa Antarctica, sa pinakamalamig, may mga Pilipino sa mga buhanginan ng gitnang silangan. But as this economic dispersion continues, 
This economic dispersion is a catalyst for the global spread and expansion of the church. The immigration and the economic dispersion of Filipinos is actually an evangelistic blessing in disguise. Kaya ako ako sa inyo, mag-abroad na. Yung mga nurses sa ospital, lalo na yung mga PT, physical therapist, literally, lahat tinatanong ko, ilan taon ko na rito sa ospital? Dalawang taon. Balak mo bang mag-Amerika? E, oo, oo po. Talaga po. E, ikaw, ilan taon ko na rito sa ospital? Isang taon, mag-Amerika ba? Ay, oo po. Anong ayaw na ayaw na rito sa Pilipinas? Ngayon, kung kayo mag-abroad, magbukas kayo ng gawain. Sa so, man lupalup kayo, itapon, magbukas kayo ng gawain, at maging kasangkapan kayo ng Diyos sa pangangaral ng Ebanghelyo ng Panginoon. The first church actually did that in the book of Acts 11.19. Those who were scattered because of the persecution arose over Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. I do not know if we have the map, but Phoenicia and uh, the, the ancient city of uh, Phoenicia is actually Lebanon, and Antioch is Turkey and Cilicia. Remember this. Are you still with me? Jerusalem was the headquarters of Jewish church. Jerusalem. Mga labing dalawang apostol ang nanguna ron. Pero ang Gentile Christianity sa pangunguna ni Pablo, ang headquarters niya ay ang Antioch. Say it with me, Antioch. 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 Sa Antiochia. The Bible says that the first Christians were called the first disciples were called Christians in Antioch. Sa Antiochia. Kaya mga kapatid, yung kanilang paglawak, yung kanilang pag-alis, naging blessing in disguise. Purihin ng Panginoon. Now, there is social media. Use the social media as the way for us to spread the gospel. Social media is called the information superhighway, the internet. The internet is called the information superhighway. Sa panahon ni Pablo, ang ginamit nilang highway ay the Apian Way. Apian Way. Ang Apian Way ay 500 kilometers in length. Yan ang ginamit ng Roma para palakihin ang kanyang emperyo. Para yumaman ang kanyang ekonomiya, para isiwalat at palakihin, palawakin ang kultura ng mga Romans. Ang kanilang ginamit na daan ay ang Apian Way. Yan din ang ginamit ni Pablo para puntahan ang maraming mga syudad at mga villages sa kanyang panahon. The Apian Way. Mga kapatid, biyaya ng Diyos. Meron na tayo ngayong social media. Kaya gamitin natin ang social media sa pagdadala ng ebanghelyo sa iba't ibang mga bansa. Ang ating unang-unang convert sa Kenya, mga kapatid, nakita ang ating church sa pamamagitan ng mga posting ng church sa social media. Tumibay sila sa kanilang pakikinig sa mga gawain sa PMCC Fort Watch of South Bay at the PMCC Fort Watch of Spokane, Washington. Brethren, let us use the social media to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because we do not know who is listening, who is watching. Let us be part of the global gathering of the elects. Number four, fulfillment of biblical prophecies. Matthew 24, 35. Ito ang napakagandang, isa sa mga napakagandang mangyayari sa kawakasan ng huling araw. Jesus Christ said, heaven and earth will pass away. 
but my words will not pass away. We learned last night that the first target of the Antichrist is what? The truth. Yes? Do you remember? Katotohanan. Yun ang kanyang unang tatargitin. Baliin, balikuin, wasakin ang katotohanan. Pero biyaya ng Panginoon sa mga araw na ito ng kawakasan ng huling araw na kung saan pilit na binabali ang katotohanan, ang katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos, kailanman ay hindi mababali. At ito ay mananatiling tunay at totoo sa bibig ng mga tunay na sugo ng Diyos. The truth of God's word are preserved through the lips of the true sentence of God. They are made sure, 2 Peter 1.19, through the lips of the true sentence of God. Because only those who are true sentence of God could say what? Is speak the word of God. John 3.34 Panging ang mga sugo ng Diyos ang mga pagsasalita ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya tayo mga kapatid, sa panahon na ito na binabaluktot ang katotohanan, sa panahon na ito ng fake news, sa panahon na ito na binabago ang kasaysayan, sa panahon na ito ng mga philosophical relativism, whitewashing, historical revisionism and distortion, we can take comfort from the fact that the Word of God remains unchanging. Are you with me? Anyan pa ba tayo? Sa panahon na lahat ay nauuga. Sa panahon na lahat ay nababago. Meron tayong tatayuan na matatag at matibay. Walang iba kundi ang salita ng ating Panginoon. The Word of God and the Word of God is what we are constantly fed and nourished. The PMCC Fort Watch is so blessed and favored to be given a steady diet of God's true, unadulterated, unvarnished Word of God. Napakapalad natin na ang mga sugo ng Diyos, swing sila'y tatayo dito ang salita ng Diyos, ang kanilang ipinapangaral sa atin. At ito ang ipinamalas, ipinamuhay ng mabuting puno ng sangbahayan na laging ipangaral lamang ang tunay na salita ng Diyos. Sapagat ito ang magpapatibay sa atin. The Word of God will build us up. Paul says to the Ephesian elders, I commit you now to the Word of His grace that can what? Build you up. Build you up. How many among you, since the beginning of this doctrinal empowerment, you are being built up? Listen, 80%, are you still there? 80% of biblical prophecies have been fulfilled already. Ayon sa mga students of the Bible and Ma and biblical manuscript experts, 80% ng biblical prophecies ay natupad na raw. Yon ay nangangahulugan na there are 2,000, roughly, 2,500 prophecies in the Bible. May mga nagbilang eh, ng prophecies. Ang bilang nila, 2,500. Alam nyo kung ilan ang 80%? Sabi nila, 2,000. The rest are yet to happen. And these prophecies will happen in our time. Isn't that exciting? That the Word of God is happening and taking place and being fulfilled right before our very eyes. 
the word of god is coming to life in our time in our generation that is why the word of god is worthy of our acceptance worthy of our trusts worthy of our obedience and submission Kaya sa darating na January, magkakaroon tayo ng Biblical Literacy Program. Lahat ng Port Watcher, magbabasa ng Biblia. At lahat ng Port Watcher, magdadala na ng Biblia. At ang dadali nating Biblia ay ang Port Watcher's Customized Bible. Ang dadali natin sa church ay Holy Bible, hindi Holy iPhone. Hindi holy iPad. Kaya yung mga nag iPhone na yan, kunyari ay sumusunod sa sermon, wala akong paniwala dyan. Kasi ang tinitingnan ko, yung mukha nila. Kaya kapag kasabi ko, buksan natin ang, <laughs> buksan natin ang ating aklat ng Biblia, halimbawa sa John 11.35, Jesus wept at umiyak si Jesus. Sabi nung isang kapatid. Eh, sabi ko, sa, sa John 11.35, kaya niya binuksan yung kanyang iPhone. Bigang gumano ni. Eh. Tapos, pagkatapos ng ganun, may ganun pa. May sideways pa. So, hindi ko alam kung Bible ang binuksan. Kaya wala namang holy, holy iPad, holy iPhone. Meron, holy Bible. Amen? Kaya ito mga kapatid, ang ating, kaya huwag tayong padadala sa mga kasinungalingan ng Diablo, sa kasinungalingan ng mga bulaang mga ngaral. Dumadami na ang Kristo. May Kristo sa Dabaw, may bagong Kristo na si Senior Aguila, Ewang, alam nyo, mahal ko, mahal, mahal ko ang ating bayan. Mahal nyo ba ang inyong bayan? Pero ang hirap mahalin ang ating bayan. Ba't ka magpapauto doon? Ang dali nating utuin. Sa politika, naku po. May mga port watcher pa na mag-aaway sa politika. O, oh, babalaan ko na kayo. Yung mga dilawan, yung mga pingka, ano, ping, pingkahan, kung sino-sino. O, oh, sasabihan ko na kayo, ha, 2025, walang mag-aaway. Sige kayo. <laughs> ako aaway sa inyo. Mga kapatid, manatili tayo sa salita ng Diyos. Basahin ang salita ng Diyos. Ibigin ang salita ng Diyos. Bulayin ang salita ng Diyos. Pag nakakapakinig kayo ng mga digmaan at alingangaw ng digmaan, huwag kayong magpapasa ng mga fake news. Ang lagi nyo lang ibibigay, mga kapatid, ay ang good news. At panghuli, the consummation of our salvation ang kaganapan, ang kasakdalan ng ating kaligtasan. Purihin nga natin ang ating Panginoon ngayon. Amen? Yan ang sabi, mga kapatid, sa, sa Luke, sa 21-28. When these things begin to take place, lahat, lahat ng kaguluhan, parang lahat ng kasamaan, sabi niya, pag ito'y makita nyo, pag ito'y magpasimula na, Straighten up. Straighten up. Praise God. Raise your heads. Praise the Lord because your redemption is drawing near. The consummation, the completion, the perfection of our faith, of us, hallelujah, is already here. In the words of Paul, it is closer It's nearer than when we first believed. Romans 13, 11. Do this, understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up 
from your sleep. This is a sobering truth na may mga natutulog pa. May mga malalamig pa sa pananampalataya. May mga tumataliwakas pa. Yeah, look at me. I failed to mention this. Ang mga tumatalikod sa pananampalataya ay may espiritu ng Antikristo. May espiritu sila ng Diablo sapagat ang Diablo hindi nagpasimula na masama. Dati siya ang pinaka marikit, maganda at makapangyarihang anghel pero nagmataas at siya'y lumaban sa Diyos at siya'y ibinulusok sa lupa kasama two-thirds of those angelic beings which are now casts in hell. Hell was made for Satan and his demons. Naalala ko, ang aking mabuting ina, nung kami bata pa, lagi niya kami winawarningan sa kalamigan. Is she, she was always reminding us. She said, children, if you will backslide, these were the words of my mother, kayo ang baga sa impyerno. Kayo ang baga, kayo magpapainit sa impyerno. Brethren, let us not fall back. Let us not stop serving the Lord. Can I hear an amen? Let us not stop. Let us not quit. Let us not surrender. The reason is because salvation is nearer. Naamoy na ni Pablo. Sa panahon pa lamang niya, naamoy niya na. Naapuhap niya na, nakikita-kita niya na, na malapit na ang kaligtasan. Kung sa panahon niya, malapit na, lalong-lalo na sa fourth watch time, mas malapit na. Ang sabi ng Baral ng Kasulatan, narito ang hukom ay nasa mga pintuan na nga. It's already at the door. There's no more time to lose because perhaps you have already lost so much time. We must cease, take advantage of every opportunity. Ang mga nasa kalamigan, wakasan nyo na yan sa tulong at habag ng ating Panginoon sa gabing ito ng empowerment. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Stop being, you know, tentative, indecisive, and dilly-dallying. Saan ka pa pupunta? Because there is no security for the backsliders. The Holy Spirit of Jesus said that I have something against you. You have forsaken your first love, referring to the Ephesian brethren. To the Laodicean church, the Spirit of God had stronger words. Ang sabi ng Spirito ng Diyos, idudura ko kayo. Kaya ang mga di tapat sa pananampalataya, ang mga malalamig, ang itsura natin, dura sa harap ng Diyos. Suka. Kaya ang sabi ng Panginoon, mabuti pa, magpasya ka, malamig o mainit. Sa gabing ito, magpasya tayo. Magpapakamainit ako sa pananampalataya. Amen. The reason is because salvation is nearer. Basahin natin sa wikang Tagalog. Ang ganito ang sabi, sapagkat ngayon, lalong malapit na sa atin ang kaligtasan kaysa nang tayo'y magsisampalataya ng una. The church, thank God. We are being transformed from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. The church is becoming more perfect. The church is becoming more complete. The church is becoming more Christ-like. And there will come a time. Are you still with me? This is where I will end. We will be the most beautiful in the sight of Jesus. 
You know what does the Bible call the church? The bride of Christ. Look at that in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 5 in verse 27. Upang ang iglesia ay maiharap sa kanyang sarili na maluwalhati, walang dungis, kulubot, o anumang bagay, kundi banal at walang kapintasan. Fast forward to the future, John, the beloved who wrote uh, the last book of the Bible, Revelation, was given a glimpse of how the church, how us, is going to look like. The remnants, are you still, do you still remember our study? The church is the remnant. Ano magiging itsura natin sa langit? Revelation 19, 7 and 8. Let us rejoice, exult, and give Him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and His bride. Can the bride shout their praises unto the Lord? Yeah. Amen! His bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. John the Beloved saw us, the church, were looking immaculately pure and clean. And what garment do we wear? The garment of our righteous deeds. Kaya yung mapaglingkod, paganda ng paganda yan. Yung naglilingkod ng sagana, yan ang pinakagwapo, pinakamaganda. Pinakahali-halina at pinakamarikit. Pinakamabango sa harap ng Diyos. Ang hindi naglilingkod, mabaho. Hubad. Pero ang naglilingkod, Nako, ano yan? Maporma yan. Maganda ang suot niyan sa harap ng Diyos. Siya ang nahahanda at purihin ng Panginoon. Iniyahanda tayo ng apostol. Iniyahanda tayo ng mga sugo ng Diyos. Paul says, I present you as a pure virgin before the Lord. The book of Colossians chapter 1 says that I am presenting every man complete, perfect in Christ. Brethren, in God's church, we must keep seeking to be perfected. Hanapin ang kasakdalan ng pananampalataya. Seek perfection, completion. Because the greatest and most captivating sight that heaven looks at on earth is the beauty of of the perfected church. Sa mata ng Diyos, sa mata, mga kapatid, ng kasintahang lalaki, ang pinakamaganda ay ang kanyang mapapangasawa. At tayo, mga kapatid, ang mapapangasawa ng ating Panginoon. You know, after the rapture, you know what is the next event? The marriage supper of the Lamb. Wala nang paghuhukom sa langit. Tayo ay nilinis na ng ating Panginoon. Kaya mga kapatid, sa kawakasan na ito ng huling araw, huwag matakot. Maging masaya. Kapanabikan ang muling pagparito ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Muli ang sabi ng Apostol, when you hear the end of the world, we should not be afraid because we do not belong to the world we belong to God. We belong to Jesus. How many among you have been blessed by the words of the Lord?